when this fight was first signed and they had the first press conference, Willie Monroe was talking about the Golovkin fight and how he only had like five or six weeks to prepare for that fight. And he cited that as one of the reasons that he ended up quitting because he didn't feel he was ready mentally to go through the situation that he was in. And now, a few weeks later, I saw an interview with Willie Monroe on the BT Sport YouTube channel, which I'll leave a link to in the description below. And in this interview, he's talking about how there was a period earlier on in his career where for several fights, he was training out of a garage and had no sparring. And while he was recounting this period in his career, he broke down in tears. And I mean, uncontrollably. And started sobbing to the point where he had to stop talking. And I was looking at it thinking, this ain't Oprah, bro. This is boxing. The school of hard knocks. Plenty of fighters have been through all types of different circumstances. Having to train in difficult situations, ill-equipped. But they don't break down in tears ahead of a big fight when they're talking about it. You know, if you want to get emotional about something, don't do it in the lead up to a fight. Unless it's something which is more understandable. If somebody died, I can understand you getting emotional. But because you had to train in a garage with no sparring a couple years ago, you want to burst out into tears, uncontrollable tears over that? Boxing is like prison. In the sense that if you show any weakness, people will use it against you. Your opponents, your adversaries, they'll use it against you. You got to keep that deep inside you, bro. You can't let that come out. Mike Tyson was a very emotional person. Maybe he still is. But one of the things that he said is that Costamardo told him to be completely objective and never to allow emotions to get involved, regardless of what was going on in his life surrounding the fight. Whenever he was dealing with fighters at press conferences or anything like that, in the build-up to a fight, and certainly during the fight itself, be completely objective, don't allow emotions to get involved, you don't feel sorry for yourself, nothing like that. You've got tunnel vision. That's the mind frame you need to be in at the highest level in professional boxing if you want to succeed long term. Tyson, you know, Mike Tyson, as an emotional guy earlier on in his career, he struggled to contain his emotions. During his prime years, he was very good at containing his emotions surrounding a fight. Tunnel vision. Be completely objective. Emotions do not get involved. Willie Monroe crying over something. I mean, what's he really crying about? And in the same interview, he's talking about how hard his life has been and how everything always seems to go wrong for him and he has to try 10 times harder for something than everybody else does. And I've got the most amount of sympathy for that. Maybe it's true. Maybe he's been really unfortunate in his life. But again, that's not the kind of attitude you need to have going into a championship fight, especially not against an opponent like Billy Joe Saunders, who will use that weakness against you. And Willie Monroe's whole demeanor in lead up to this fight has been a red flag as far as I'm concerned. You can't look Billy Joe in the eye. Billy Joe was verbally and psychologically dominating him during fight week. Even at the Weigh in, <laughs> Billy Joe pulled the, a very, very cheap shot of getting his son to punch Willie Monroe in the groin. And this is not the first time he's got his son to do this. There was an infamous video of Billy Joe Saunders sending his son into, I believe it was HMV, and getting his son to punch some HMV employee in the groin. 
and he quickly removed that video after there was some big outrage about it. Well, he's done it again here with Willie Monroe. So anybody who thinks that that was an accident or anything like that, BS, because I saw that video where he sent his son to punch. And when I say accident, I mean, Willie Monroe touched Billy Joe Saunders' son on the head. And then that's when his son punched him in the groin. Anyone who thinks that that weren't a setup, BS. <laughs> that was definitely a setup. That's why Billy Joe Saunders' son kept on getting on the scales constantly, constantly, constantly doing that because they were trying to provoke Willie Monroe to maybe touch him so then his son would have the excuse to hit him in the groin. Because when that video was out of Billy Joe Saunders' son hitting that HMV employee in the groin, that HMV employee wasn't even looking at Billy Joe Saunders' son. Billy Joe, you could hear him on camera sending him over to go and do it. So it's a trashy thing to be doing a trashy stunt on Billy Joe Saunders' behalf but it just shows the sheer contempt that he has for Willie Monroe and he's trying his best to intimidate him to get in his head and all that kind of stuff Willie Monroe is a good boxer and a very good athlete and as long as the fight with Billy Joe is a chess match a boxing match and it stays technical, Willie Monroe should be okay. And I don't discount his chances of winning the fight. But if Billy Joe manages to take him into a dark place in that squared circle, maybe hurts him, maybe has him down on the cards and he's beating him up, I expect Willie Monroe to crumble. He don't seem like the most mentally and emotionally strong person to me I expect him to crumble maybe he won't crumble in the exact same way he crumbled against Golovkin by outright quitting but he might instead just go into his shell and try and survive the fight if as I say he finds himself in trouble he might just stop himself you know not what stop himself but he might not try and win the fight if he feels like he's in serious danger he will just try and survive it you got to be very, very tough to make it at a top level in boxing. You do have to have an arrogance about you. Maybe not outwardly expressed, but in your mind, it has to be there. And not necessarily in terms of your personality outside of boxing. No, you might be humble about other aspects of yourself. But when it comes to your boxing, you have to have an ego, you have to have an arrogance, again, even if it's not outwardly expressed, to make it at the top level, long term in this sport. An arrogance that comes with absolute sheer belief in yourself, just incredible self-belief in your ability. You have to almost have a belief that you're destined for this boxing thing. That nobody can take it away from you. That this is you. That no matter what happens, this is you. And Chris Eubank Sr. sometimes talks about being delusional and how you have to be delusional to be a boxer. And I understand where he's coming from when he said that. I remember when Paul Williams had the motorcycle accident which ended his career and paralyzed him. And Paul Williams said, I'll be back in the ring. Now, the rest of us are looking at him like, boy, I don't like your chances. But that's the kind of mentality that these guys have. You know, they, they believe in themselves so much, they think they're destined for this. And that's the kind of thing, the mindset you have to have at the top level. Does Willie Monroe have that? It don't seem like it. Now, just to close this video out, I will talk about Billy Joe Saunders' attitude. Some people say that Saunders is trying way too hard. Willie Monroe is saying that Saunders is trying way too hard. Now, Saunders comes from, well, he is uh, a gypsy, a traveling background, and it is within their culture to, to at least when it comes to fighting, because they do a lot of bare knuckle fighting, it is within their culture to talk a lot of trash to each other. You go online, you go on YouTube, and you look up, gypsy bare knuckle fights and you'll see them doing 
the equivalent of WWE wrestling promos, calling each other out and talking loads of smack. So that's within their culture to do that kind of thing. And Billy Joel, just like Tyson Fury, brings it to the boxing world. I'm not saying all gypsy fighters do it, they don't, but a lot of them do. Billy Joel Saunders is one of the ones who do, who does. So that's to be expected. But people are saying he's ramping it up to the next level for this Willie Monroe fight and that sending his son up there to punch Monroe in the groin at the weigh-in was a sign of real desperation from Billy Joel that he's trying everything he can to get under Willie Monroe's skin. And Willie Monroe and maybe some other people might agree and say that that's the sign of a worried man. Well, Billy Joel has seen a weakness what he believes is a weakness anyway, in Willie Monroe's psyche. I'm sure Billy Joe respects Willie Monroe as a boxer, his boxing skills. He's a great athlete, Willie Monroe. He can box. He's very slick. So, Billy Joe in his head's probably thinking this could turn out to be a nip and tuck fight, a chess match. So I want to take his coolness, his calmness away from him. You know, that's going to benefit me. If I take his calmness away, if he stays calm in the ring, I could have problems. This is probably what Billy Joe is thinking. So I need to get under his skin, not let him be calm, not allow him to be as sharp as he would normally be boxing. Take that away from him. So you could say it's Billy Joe worrying, or you could say it's just strategy. You know, however you want to look at it. Um, again, I don't discount the possibility of Willie Monroe winning. It's possible, definitely. He has the skills, he has the ability. Billy Joe is looking in the best shape of his entire career. I've never seen him look in this kind of condition. Will it be enough to defeat Willie Monroe? We'll see. Drop your comments in the comment section below. Let me know how you feel about this particular fight. Let me know how you feel about all the points I've raised in this video. Go and have a look at the interview with Willie Monroe. As I say, he bursts into tears crying about how hard done by has been in his life and with regards to boxing and how he used to train in a garage with no sparring and all this kind of stuff. Joe Calzaghe was world champion for many years and he trained basically out of a shed in the middle of nowhere in the valleys in Wales with his dad and for many of his world title fights he had next to no sparring. So, you know, <laughs> that is what that is uh, he didn't cry or complain about it you know that's what it takes at the top level man anyway it's happening on my